Diamond joins us. Good to have you, Steve. Austin, and welcome back from Japan, Ben. A nice, quiet week Thanks, yeah. for you to land back into the country. So much to discuss here. So, so important. Mentioned there that this is like Bloodgate. Is, is this bigger than Bloodgate? Um, well, I think a lot of the actions around Bloodgate, people taking blood capsules onto the field, doctors involved in actually cutting players to, to, to paper over it, that was a more shocking incident, but the magnitude of this probably is greater. Um, you know, this affects more teams. That was a one-off game. This is over three years. The longevity of it, of course, make, probably makes it a bigger deal. But also the fact that any team that has lost a player to Saracens that they wanted to keep can now say, well, that's the reason that, that we lost them. And, and, you know, this league has, has very publicly been making losses. All the teams have been making losses. And a, a big part, probably the biggest part of that is players' wages. Now, if this has contributed to spiralling player, player wages, then of course it's bigger, yeah. Steve Diamond, director of rugby here, also, of course, on the board for Sales Sharks. What was your reaction when the news broke? Well, shock, really. I think, um, you know, there's rumours that four or five years ago there was an amnesty and people threw the cards on the table and let's clean up our act, let's stay within the cap. The league's losing as Ben suggests, upwards of £40 million pounds a year. And, and everybody bought into the fact that, you know, if we if we do cap it, the player inflation on the wages can be looked after over the next five or ten years. And it's sad if, if it is true and it is proven that they, uh, they're they guilty of it, whether it's a, an oversight or not, the, the, they've got the appeal and, and that will come out in the wash. Several seasons ago, you were a coach for a couple of seasons at Saracens. What was the club like at that time? Was it about 2006, seven? You were there. What was yeah, what was the club? How yeah, was that operated the, the, then? The club was run by Nigel Lennon, and, and he's brilliant at looking after players and staff. He is. He's, he's fantastic. Um, uh, the club was in the doldrums then. I was there for two years. We, there was coaches in and out every one or two years, and maybe four or five years after I left, it, they got some stability. Um, but yeah, I mean, Nigel's one of the great owners. Uh, you know, he's in, been in it for 25 years in the professional game and he looks after people. Austin, at the moment, the ruling is from the tribunal that they are guilty of breaching the salary cap. As we say, there is a suggestion they might ask for review. That hasn't been received yet. But clearly a lot of anger around the Premiership and around the game. We heard there from Rob Bax, so we heard from Tony Rowe from the Exeter Chiefs. And it seems that a big part of the anger directed at Saracens is their refusal to accept the finding of the tribunal. How do you read that? I still think from uh, there's there's two views. I still think it's quite cloudy. We don't know the actual outcome yet. There's not enough information potentially coming from Premiership Rugby so that we can all delve a little bit in, deeper into the actual minutiae of everything. But I, I do think it's it's a crying shame what's happened. First and foremost, for Saracens actually, because to the outside they created a bit of a dynasty there. And Nigel had done amazing things for people. He'd supported the club. They got a school. They do a huge amount in the community. And and if that's tarnished in any way, I think that's bad. And I think it's wrong because that's the side of players getting paid a few more quid, which is effectively what we're talking about. So th there's that side of it. But then if they have blatantly cheated the rules and they have benefited from it, then they will pay for it. Uh, but it's still cloudy and I still think there's two sides to the story yet. And the story of the way that Nigel and the other directors of, of Saracens have liked to support players through co-investments or uh, a variety of different other ways investing in their businesses, supporting them for life after sport. That is fantastic. That is what rugby players, ex-rugby players want to see. But if that is done as a benefit instead of being paid for that team and to entice a player, then that's also wrong. So the, the, it's still cloudy and it needs to be cleared up and a lot more information needs to come out yet. Now, people will argue there's a mechanism for supporting players which doesn't need you to break the salary cap and there's huge collateral damage. The school, as you say, that people will feel very, very let down by Saracens at the moment. Steve, when you look at the punishment that's been handed out, some, Tony Rowe, earlier in the week, was suggesting that Saracens be thrown out of the Premiership, maybe down into the Championship for, for three years. How do you gauge the punishment that's been handed out? Well, it's probably the, the most severe punishment they can have. I don't think in the regulations you can throw them out um, if proven guilty on appeal. Uh, so I think it, there's got to be a deterrent. There's got to, you've got to stop uh, organisations doing it and and uh, I think it's, if, it, if, if proven guilty, I think it's the right um, sanction. A big old story is broken and we need to look at that. Uh, Chris Ashton joins us. Chris, first of all, many congratulations. A dad again. That's yeah, the thanks. easy bit. You know what to talk about there. Um, you, of course, were at Saracens uh, for a few seasons. Were there discussions amongst the players that maybe there was a feeling that Saracens weren't adhering to the salary cap? Uh, no, not in my time, none whatsoever. Um, 
in rugby we don't really speak like that in general throughout the throughout the league and definitely not within your club. It's you go and you sort your deal via your agent or via whoever it is at the club. You don't then go and speak to the players what they're doing and what they're what they're on. So no, I think it's quite the opposite. We're all quite individual in that regard. I'm sure when the news was broken to the guys on Tuesday that this uh, this finding of guilt was going to be made public, it would have been a shock for them. A lot of your friends are still at, at Saracens. You know them very well. Have you spoken to them? What's the reaction been? Yeah, I, I really don't think they expected this, um, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I, I think it's hit them quite hard, um, and they're all fearing it because they didn't expect it to come in the way it has. Um, so it's very unexpected from them as a group and uh, as I said as players you're quite um, away from this it's not nowhere near uh, qualified to speak or to have any involvement in it so for this for them to come out on Monday and it'd be such a big hit to them um, yeah it's had a shock to the group. Austin there are all the intangibles the effect this has had on individuals and clubs uh, Exeter Chiefs they're the ones that the focus is on they're the ones that, that Saracens have faced most often recently in finals there's a feeling as we heard from Tony Rowe that maybe there's some titles that have passed them by and potentially there's a financial impact are we seriously looking at a situation where Exeter Chiefs and other clubs may sue Saracens for, for loss of earnings? Well we don't know do we I think there's, there's still a lot of like you said intangibles that we're, we're not sure of what's going to happen in weeks to come um, if Saracens are ultimately found guilty or admit a, a, a sentiment of guilt and try and do uh, some negotiation over the fine and the points, which I, I thoroughly expect them to go ahead and try and do, then we'll see what comes next. I, I completely understand from Exeter's point of view when they've had a long season, their squad's tired, they get to the final and they lose a couple of those finals there they're in, the, in charge of and subs come on with great international quality. You start to ask those questions, you know, and... Uh, you know, if you're playing against a side with 20 internationals in the, in, the, in the 23, you start to think, well, how are they doing it? And there's been that suspicion for a number of years. Now that suspicion's gone because they're asking serious empirical questions of Saracens. But for Exeter to take that, to take that loss from the last year's final and think, are we just going to sit on that? I, I, I'm not so sure. And reading between the lines of what Tony Rowe said and uh, Dan Baxter, I, I, I think we could potentially see one civil case. And if we see one, we could see a domino effect. We don't know in the short term what is going to be happening with Saracen. They have indicated that they will be seeking a review. It's not an appeal, it's a review of the finding of the tribunal. The long term, Ben, we don't know what is going to happen. This is clearly going to be very damaging, regardless of the outcome of any potential review for Saracens and for Nigel Ray. What does he do? Where does he go from here? Well, who knows? I mean, Nigel's his own man and this will have hurt him dramatically even even if he's now exonerated and there is an appeal it still has damaged the reputation of what he's built and I'm sure he'll feel very sore about that but for in my mind you know if it he's talking about the co-investments that is the problem in that if you have these co-investments there always there is always going to be that leveled as, as suspicion from other parties you look from outside and say well why has he got these these arrangements business arrangements we heard Tony Rowe saying it there I think it, it, it almost becomes impossible to do that and, and, and still have a salary cap without that suspicion. So I think eventually we'll see the club saying, look, while the players are still playing, you don't have these arrangements. If you want to have an arrangement with them after they retire, uh, then, then do that. But I think that connection between people connected with the club and the players is always going to harbour suspicions around the salary cap. Chris, as a player... With, who's, who's been with Saracens when the trophies have been won, how might those players feel that regardless of the outcome of a possible review, that some will look and say these trophies are tarnished. And if the review and the finding is upheld, definitely one during the course of a breach of a salary cap. Yeah, as a, as a previous player, though, I mean, it's a very difficult question to ans answer because you're so out of, out of the loop on that kind of stuff. You play in, you all buy into uh, what you're doing as a club and how you play and that you want to win. That's the mindset, and that's what you're doing day in, day out. Everything else is irrelevant in a way. Um, and as uh, being part of the group as, as when we won those champions, that, that was the intention and that was what we did. It's kind of by the by what happened behind the scenes. It's nothing to do with the playing group.